Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Vosk and welcome back to the Voscoin YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over what it was like mining cryptocurrency full time over the last year. Plus, Voscoin rebrand, plus a quick update on Tails, plus this video is going to be awesome so you better stick around. Right here in this garage is where it all began. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Voscoin of the Voscoin YouTube channel. And today I'm here to give you an update on my mining farm. And just a year ago, I was sitting here talking about how my farm is projected to be making 500 US dollars a day mining cryptocurrency, using these custom computers to support these decentralized networks and getting paid six figure salary. But did it really pan out that well? That's what this video is all about today. I'm gonna take you through the daily struggles and some of the rewards that were reaped mining cryptocurrency full time. But before we jump into that too much, I wanna know, do you guys like the rebrand? You just saw the new logo opener, did you like that? Please leave a comment below and I want asking you a couple questions in this video. Do you like the rebrand? Are you a cryptocurrency miner? And finally, what's your Bitcoin address? Include that with your comment on this YouTube video below and uh, who knows what could happen, right? Before we jump into it, I wanna give you guys a quick update on Tails, okay? So it's been a little over one year since the whole Tails saga began. She had severe thrombocytopenia, Basically, her immune system was destroying her platelets, her blood was not clotting, and she was on the verge of just completely bleeding out. Very, very bad, frustrating situation. So she got pumped up on steroids, and a couple months later, she did the equivalent of slipping a disc in her back, and it was just a really, really long recovery process. But I'm so fortunate and happy to say that we are now one year out. She's still alive and kicking. She's doing better than ever, and that's all I could ever ask for. Above all, the people most supportive of Tales for all of you, the awesome Boss Coin community. So I'd just like to say thank you so much for being so supportive along the whole journey and uh, allowing me to do what I do to you know keep a roof over my head and keep chasing uh, these crypto dreams while being able to provide for her, get her the treatment that she needed and uh, everything else. It ended up really adding up and was uh, very stressful, but couldn't be happier. It was all worth it because she is right here. Also, I made my first car video for really the first time in over a year. So I'll link out to that in the description at the end of the video if you want to check it out. I'm a total car guy if you didn't know. And uh, there you go. So what would it be like if I made car videos? Well, now you can see. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Today, I'm going to break this video down into basically four parts. And that's going to be quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter, you guessed it, four of 2018. And then my outlook going into 2019 of what cryptocurrency mining looks like you know, for the foreseeable future. And as far as quarter one goes, we're coming off the highs, literally, of Bitcoin at its all-time high. As I touched on earlier in the video, a year ago, the farm was making $500 a day. That's insane. Also, at another point in January, quarter one of this year, as a full-time miner, I was projected to make $500 a day with the Amp Miner A3. Bitmain Amp Miner A3 and ASIC Mining Rig is making $500 a day? What? I was one of the earlier people to get that machine and when I first plugged it in I was on track to make $500 that first day. That's assuming that you trade out all of that crypto for USD. However, as a full-time cryptocurrency miner in January 2018, I was projected to make like $200,000. That's before my electric bill and all the other associated fees and taxes, but I was projected obviously a very high salary, risk versus reward. Um, unfortunately, as things went on and the market continued to shrink, so did the earnings. But there was something that just kept pumping the market back up as far as mining goes in quarter one. And that would be the whole Z Classic Bitcoin private drama fiasco, extremely hyped fork that I eventually uh, got sucked into and covered some on the channel. If you are one of my subscribers, this, is why, this advice is only for my subscribers and uh, it's something I would tell you, you know, bro to bro, man to man, whatever, I would sell your Z Classic as fast as you can. And I don't mean, maybe I'll be totally wrong here, but I think you're kind of ridiculous if you don't think that price is gonna plummet. And only recently it came out that they did pre-mine some of that fork, and at the end of the day, uh, it's been confirmed. It's a bad project. 
they're scammers. So in hindsight, the best move as a full-time cryptocurrency miner would have been to operate more like a full-time farm and less like a you know enthusiast or you know I think it's sort of a lame term, but like a visionary. I see the I see the long term of crypto, which which I do. You have to do not only what's you know best for crypto and the project, but you also got to take care of yourself to an extent. You know, don't be selfish, don't be greedy, but also you know don't run yourself into the ground don't you know mine yourself into poverty that's not the move that's not the play you don't want that quarter two quarter two begins and i kick it off in april with the video talking about how the outlook for gpu mining is not looking good as far as mining it's not looking good boys it's not looking good and i got a lot of mixed feedback i've gotten a lot of mixed feedback on the channel talking about asic miners but you know this is a cryptocurrency channel i cover everything crypto with a huge focus on mining because that's where a big part of just my passion and heart is and that's what drew me into cryptocurrency and obviously i love gpu mining i'm a gpu miner at heart however i'm going to cover again every aspect of mining and i was getting a lot of hate for covering asic miners but i feel like that's why i was kind of on the the leading edge of understanding this and seeing the impact and understanding ASIC miners and seeing that they were going to thrash and trash GPU mining over the past year. And spoiler alert, they did. So as quarter two hit, I made my public plea saying, hey, reach out to all your favorite cryptocurrency projects and tell them what you think if you are a GPU miner, if you're a long-term supporter, if you built a rig just to mine that coin. And a lot of people did. However, unfortunately, as you see, it didn't make a big enough impact as we needed. And being a full-time cryptocurrency miner, my farm profits continued to drop and drop and drop. And in quarter two is where I had a major downsizing because I was stressed out from all the labor that goes into being a miner. It's like you just hook these things up and oh, hey, congratulations, man, you're rich now. It's not like that at all. You've got to figure out how to configure these miners. You got to get on a mining pool. Um, are you in a good pool? Are you getting paid out? Do you have a wallet? Where are you going to exchange that coin? How much are you going to hold yourself? Oh, bad news. Something went wrong with your rig. You need to figure out all the parts. Say something goes wrong. You need to figure out what component on your mining rig is bad that's causing it to constantly crash and thus probably burn electric but not make you any money because it's not mining properly. Mining is very intense. And while you know I create these guides and I put out this information to make it accessible to my opinion, anyone, it's still not easy, okay? It's certainly accessible, but it's not easy. So with all that in mind, April, it's starting to warm up, it's starting to get a little bit hotter. I needed to change out one of my exhaust fans that went bad for, uh, yeah, the third time, which again, all these things are kind of starting to pile up and I'm like, you know, Profits are going down, the stress is adding up, I've got, you know, XYZ problem, it's time to downscale a little bit, reduce my risk, and also reduce my bias, because naturally you're going to be biased to whatever you're the most involved in. It's like when you see a guy going around saying X coin is the best ever, well guess what, he probably owns a lot. Or, you know, someone is so like biased on, say, GPU mining because they own so many GPUs. And I've always done my best to be, you know, impartial and remove myself, you know, from the situation. And, and what I think overall is if I wasn't, say, a big GPU miner, but I think that it was impacting my opinion there, you know, at least slightly. So, again, I wanted to downsize it because around this time I started to walk the line of not just being a full-time uh, minor, but also kind of a full-time youtuber as mining earnings were dropping I needed to supplement my income and also use my time wisely because you know I'm not lazy. I'm not just gonna sit around and play video games all day I want to get out there. I want to be productive. I want to make progress in life I want to just keep on building the Voscoin community. I think we have one of the best communities in the world and especially in crypto um, If you're not, you know following us on all our social media in there hanging out in the discord you're missing out so at the end of quarter two I was basically forced to reduce my risk and also reduce my bias and you know focus on a few other projects other than just chasing the profitable coins maintaining increasing innovating with the mining farm I had to diversify there and again this is where more and more ASIC miners are starting to be announced and released and with the uh, the potential onslaught of the Antminer E3 the Ethereum ASIC miner I knew that things we're looking bad. You're really good at guessing. I can't believe that you knew that, well, uh, we were gonna talk about quarter three next. So quarter three hits. 
And this is where, you know, the writing on the wall really just becomes reality. All cryptocurrency prices continued to go down. Mining profitability continued to go down. Somehow hash rates are, you know, continuing to go up. There's more and more ASIC miners. The Ant Miner Z9 Mini is out and about. So Equihash is now taken over by ASIC Mining. Uh, Ethereum's ETH hash is taken over by ASIC mining. Not only that, but I start looking back and I talk about this on my mining farm update. It's just crazy to hear myself say that I was mining one Zcash every other day with a 30k soul farm. Try to do that today because it's not happening. As you can see, you know, I'm mining more, but I'm making less and the coin that i'm mining is less so i'm not just making less in usd daily earnings but i'm also acquiring less coin so if that coin does increase in value which you know basically half a year later hasn't really a great but with an increase in price i'm not getting as high of an increase in usd holdings so it's a very big negative impact across the board this is also the same quarter that I made the revelation that my mining farm now only earns the equivalent of one Chipotle burrito a day. So as a full-time cryptocurrency miner that, you know, by quarter three, I had transitioned into a part-time miner. Uh, you know, I was on track to eat one meal a day. The onslaught of ASIC miners decreasing GPU mining earnings, which, you know, I had a large holding of GPUs for GPU mining was a very big impact. Furthermore, the prices of cryptocurrencies continued down. The hash rates continued to stay the same or really across the board pretty much went up. Um, there were a couple exceptions, but for the most part, the hash rates went up, earnings went down. However, it's not a totally linear comparison. I did reduce my hardware. So if I still had all of my original hardware, I would have had higher earnings. However, my electric bill also was going up and it wasn't because of adding more and more miners my electric company raised my rates. Unfortunately, where I am, I only have access to one electric company and they decided to implement a summer and winter rate, effectively increasing my electric bill, if all things stayed the same, by almost 40%. That's insane. That's a huge cut into my cryptocurrency mining profits. And not only with a higher summer bill is you know my earnings going down, obviously, in the summer and they say summer but it's almost like three quarters of the freaking year uh, those are also the hottest times that's where i'm gonna have to run the most equipment aka exhaust fans to pull more and more heat out and you know keep the air flowing so i'm going to be spending even more electric keeping things cool and i'm paying more for that electric so the issue here really compounded quickly so at the end of quarter three i couldn't even afford guacamole guacamole i need guacamole quarter four this is what many people call the crypto winner because uh things are bad they've been bad and they look to continue to be bad in the near and medium term future in quarter four went into it i had the sc1 Psycoin miner uh this thing was making you know more or less 50 bucks a day in the beginning which is very good earnings reminiscent of the old days of cryptocurrency mining however this is from Obelisk. They delivered these miners, you know, basically uh, over a year late. Uh, they forked to protect their algorithm and make only their miners uh, useful and profitable on their algorithm mining their coin. There's a lot of debate, uh, negative emotions, people burned uh, around this miner. However, I had one and it was making money. So that was cool. Miss Vosk also still had her Ant Miner Z9 Mini. This was earning a couple bucks a day, but not much anymore. ASIC miners don't have a very long life cycle. So what's profitable now is unlikely to be profitable, say in a year from now, because they're going to release either A, a lot more of that hardware, increasing the hash rate and decreasing your earnings on it and increasing their pockets, or a new machine will come out and it'll be much more efficient than that ASIC miner, which will thus increase the hash rate and it raises the efficiency bar, probably pushing your old miner out of the way. As far as me though, I was not running too many GPUs now, only on speculative coins or coins that I liked and I wanted to support their network, you know, help decentralize it and I wasn't losing money on it. Unfortunately, 
as quarter four progressed, earnings on GPU mountable coins continued to get worse and worse overall. There were a couple pumps, for example, Ravencoin had a very nice run, uh, but you know, again, that was the minority. The majority of coins continued to not be profitable, with a ton of graphics cards still being parked on Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, which are now very dominated by ASICs. A graphics card is just not competitive with an ASIC miner, an application specific integrated circuit miner. I should have said that earlier, but that's a purpose built machine. All it does is mine this cryptocurrency algorithm. A GPU graphics card has a lot of uses and it's more versatile, but it's like being a jack of all trades. You know, you can be great at everything, but you're not the best at something. Whereas an ASIC miner is the best at that one algorithm, but it can't even do anything else. There's also FPGA miners, which are like a kind of a hybrid of a graphics card and an ASIC miner for mining, uh, but they're very specialized, they're hard to use, they're expensive, and they are controlled by bit streams, which would be kind of like the equivalent of a miner program for say an NVIDIA 1080 Ti. Uh, but the thing is that it's extremely lucrative if you have one of those top tier bit streams. They're not something that's really openly circulated, so you're really gonna be at the mercy of others and uh, it's just never been something I've been comfortable recommending here on the channel. It's the highest level of centralization. I think graphics cards are much more dispersed and decentralized because, you know, say my brother and his gaming computer, he can mine cryptocurrency. That's cool. Uh, he's not going to be able to run an ASIC miner nor have the interest or desire to. And he especially is not going to be able to run an FPGA with a complicated bitstream that he couldn't even get if he wanted to. So again, just a quick comparison for how I feel about it. Quarter four is also where Bitcoin fell off another cliff, decreasing from $6,000, $5,000 down into the $3,000 range, which sucked. Uh, this was potentially a good opportunity if you did it early enough to transition out of your cryptocurrency holding into hardware. And this is what I did with the Spondulis SPX 36. So I spent some Bitcoin on that before the uh, Bitcoin fell off that cliff again and basically lost half of its value, but I got a miner that at the time was making $40, $50 a day and still right now in 2019 is making over $20 a day. This is a factoring electric right now, just for reference. In this time period as a miner, I had to make some decisions. Well, you know, while I'm not exactly thrilled about ASIC mining, it is profitable. I do know how to do it. And most importantly, I have the infrastructure built out. I have a 10 by 12 shed custom outfitted with 100 amps that can move some serious cooling air through it. So I have open air cooling, you know, essentially installed there and shelf set up to rapidly deploy cryptocurrency miners, no matter what they are. So I shouldn't, as a business owner there, I should not just let my business sit dormant. I should put profitable hardware in there if I think it's a good gamble. Because when it comes to cryptocurrency mining, it's basically as simple as this. I could buy X amount of coin, with say a thousand dollars or i could say buy a mining rig with that same money and i can look at the amount of crypto i could buy with that thousand dollars say it's just just say it is one bitcoin okay or i could buy that one machine and if i buy that machine and it mines me say a bitcoin and a half over the next year and i only had to pay point like a quarter of a bitcoin in electric i've now got one and a quarter bitcoin as opposed to one bitcoin and I did that seamlessly. I didn't have to pay exchange fees or anything else. And thus, that was a better decision if you just look at it from point A to point B. There's a lot of variables here. There's having that crypto available, making trades and so forth, or being able to take out that money if you need to understand all the variables. I'm just saying that if you go by this example, that's where I believe you can see a lot of merit in cryptocurrency mining let alone the whole altruistic act of supporting the network supporting projects furthering decentralization and just the simple fact that cryptocurrency mining is really cool if you're a nerd and you're into it which i am and finally that kind of brings me to my next point that pretty much wraps up 2018 as far as how it was being a miner for me but now as we're moving into 2019 it's, I don't want to sound like I've given up on cryptocurrency mining. I don't want to seem like I'm down or depressed or I've changed or anything like that. I still believe in mining, but I can't ignore the facts. And I still believe in cryptocurrency, but I can't ignore all of the prices. I understand the view of always wanting to increase your Bitcoin holdings, but if Bitcoin continues down, I would like to really increase them in the $1,000 range 
as opposed to increasing them in the $3,000 range. And then I'm going to be pretty sad if they lose, say, 66% more of their value. Again, I don't necessarily think it'll go that low, but I'm just saying that for a reference. As we move into 2019, my outlook is positive. We've been low. We've fallen very far from the top of the crypto market. The interest in cryptocurrency has fallen heavily. And that's good because that kind of has to happen. Everything is cyclical. Okay, we're going to go up. We're going to go down. And you guys guessed it. Eventually, soon, hopefully, one day, cryptocurrency is going to go up a lot again. And I'm going to be there. I hope you guys are too. Because if you're not, you can miss out on, again, the opportunity of your lifetime. Some people think that the last bull run was the only opportunity of their lifetime, but I believe cryptocurrency is going to give us another opportunity of our lifetime. And just outside of cryptocurrency, you're going to have a lot of great opportunities in your life. So don't ever give up. Don't get down. It can be very frustrating. You can really beat yourself up if you make a bad decision, especially when money is involved. But take that as a learning lesson and grow from it and just continue to chase dreams and whatever goals you may have. For me personally, that's going to be being involved with cryptocurrency and trying to produce awesome content for you guys or i hope it's awesome at least the best i can here on the boss coin youtube channel but you thought i was done but i'm not totally done yet as far as my outlook for mining in 2019 i'm hopeful and i think that there's a lot of cool projects in the work ethereum has officially announced that they're going to be tentatively implementing prog pow which is a it's not a gpu only algorithm but it's just, it essentially is made to equalize GPU miners, ASIC miners, and FPGA so that no hardware gets a huge efficiency increase. They say that ASIC miners are only 25% better on ProgPow compared with the GPU. So, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but any, any sort of new algorithm is going to be a step in the right direction as far as I'm concerned with the current state of mining on that coin. There's also some other exciting proof of work coins coming out. Like Beam just came out. We just had our video about it. As you can see in the video, what's up? Welcome back to the Boss Coin YouTube channel. Today, we're chasing a hot new coin that just launched their mainnet today. I'm excited. And it's not like I'm so, you know, set on Beam. I'm excited to see a new mineable cryptocurrency. And guess what? Next week, Grincoin is coming out. And that's another Mimblewimble implementation, which I'm going to talk about more here soon on the channel. There's several new mineable proof of work cryptocurrencies launching just in quarter one of 2019 with one of the, well, actually the second biggest cryptocurrency, Ethereum, looking to change their algorithm to include GPU miners again. Zcash is also exploring ProgPow. But granted, their view is a little skewed on some things, so we'll talk about that in another video. But my bottom line is that I think that the, the outlook is very hopeful. I'm not saying build out 100 rigs today, but I would be careful getting rid of your gear now because I think that things are finally starting to turn around. Prices on crypto are at rock bottom. Prices for hardware are at rock bottom. And hopefully we'll start to see some light. We'll start to see some promise. We'll start to see some innovation and things just looking better moving forward and a more exciting time again for cryptocurrency mining. So at the end of the day, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is my recap of what it was like mining cryptocurrency or being a full-time miner in cryptocurrency over the last year, as well as my outlook here going into 2019. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up on the video. That means a lot to me when you guys take the time to hit the thumbs up and leave a comment below. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. Everyone have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>